Right, so let's see how far we can get on now. Um, after those rebuilds, uh, let's get back to GTK4. That, I don't think there was any reinstallation of that, was there? Uh, rebuild, oh yes, rebuild after Sysprof and enables, right, okay, so it's just a rebuild after Sysprof, which is what we were rebuilding previously, so let's get on with this. So make some changes from upstream. Make a temporary build directory. Copy the mise and setup. It says in my notes to add the enable sysprof. So that's that one. We want to add that in. We've got color D, we want the man pages, cloud providers, we've got and introspections already enabled, so that should be the final configuration. Just double check if things enabled or set there. Documentation false. Okay, there wasn't any. Oh, that's for API documentation by the looks of it. So we'll leave that. Don't want debugging, haven't got Vulcan, so that's fine. Let's build. Right, so that's finished building. I need to go back to the terminal to run the test, but as I remember, I don't think they took too long to run. Um, so let's run this debus session again. Okay, I've just got to look out, see if any windows pop up to and they, oh yes, this is the one that had 1400 tests, so it might be a little while. Yeah, there is Windows coming up, so I've just got to click madly to um, enable them on the screen. Okay, there's various window still coming up. So I'm on 1200, There's loads of windows I've got to click for now. So I just turn 1300 tests of 1467. There's just loads of windows that appear. Right, yeah, I've got two timeouts again as I did before, so. <clears throat> um, 
obviously nothing's changed there. I can't can't remember what I, that was now, but I think there was a good explanation for it. So almost there. Last 50 or so. Okay, it's just doing the last one. Okay, so there's five that were skipped and two tests timed out. So, um, yeah, and they, oh, that was it. They were to do the headless system. So, uh, I'm not sure if it can somehow detect that there's no display to connect to or something. I'm not sure. Um, but that's fine. That's how it was before. So I'm happy with that. I'll do another reinstall or, or a reinstall. And that's GTK4 complete. So I'll copy that, paste that in and mark it as rebuilt. That's done. So that's GTK4. <clears throat> Let's go back to iBus now. So that bit needed GTK4 for an IM module. Dbus Python, we've got, yep, all of these we've got. So we can now do iBus. Hopefully we've got to a point where we can get ourselves out of this massive rabbit hole we've been, this dependency rabbit hole. Um, and also there's a Unicode character database. So that's optional. And if we install this, oh, sorry, is the root user. Uh, if we install this, it says we've got to remove uh, an option there. So that's expanded into the system. Fix an issue of deprecated schema entries. And run the configure without the disabled, sorry, Unicode. So let's put that in and put that in. See if there's any other options. So you can disable this emoji one if you installed emoji one, which is outside of the BLFS book. We've installed the Unicode character database, so I won't put that in. So we've got GTK2 and 4, so we'll leave that in. Enable Python library. So we can add that in because we've installed those options. Wayland, we've got that. And use this if you want to build a Python 3 support library along the Python 2 one, right? Um, I imagine we should put that in. I guess to this, which we, yeah, we've got Python 2, so it might default to Python 2, so we should put that in. And won't put that in to rebuild the API documentation. So let's run that. So let's just look at the output. So it has actually 
decided not to enable Python 2, so maybe that option, um, I don't know if it did have a an effect or not. It might have decided to enable Python 2 here, perhaps. I'm not sure. Um, GTK I am modulated. Uh, so it looks like it hasn't found GTK 4 there. Oh, use it if you install GTK 4. Okay. I misread that. I, mis I read it the same as the GTK 2. So I need to add that in as well. So that's better. We've got all the three versions of GTK. Um, I thought I didn't enable Python library and it hasn't found it. Enable Python library. Yeah, it's there. Yes, it hasn't. Enable Python library. Let's double check the Python dependencies then. So D bus Python. That's in and py object three dot four dot one dot three dot four four dot one. That's in as well. That's interesting because it says py against py object rebuild after GTK4. But I've just rebuilt GTK4, so I wonder if that's reset something. In fact, it was the, yeah, it was the package I'd built just before GTK4. Um, I wonder if I've done that in the wrong order, possibly. Uh, let's have another look at that. So it's only for tests anyway. Um, right, I think I might rebuild this then in case reinstalling GTK4 is done something to that package. So let's do tar py object 3.44. So copy that in, rebuild it. I think this needed the X11. Yeah, so back to the terminal. Change into PY object 3 and the build directory and run ninja test. Yep, that's passed. So I'll do ninja install again. Okay, so let's tidy that up. So back to iBus. So I'll just copy in and I'll put the fact that I've re rebuilt it again so let's recall the configure command Let's see if that made any difference no it's still no to say would use enable Python library to enable Dash dash enable dash Python dash library. Okay, um, let's see what effect that has. Yep, 
No, it's still no effect. Yeah, without that Python 3. Enable Python 3. Where are we? Um, even though it's a bit strange actually, because we put disable Python 2 and it's defaulted the Python to Python 2. Um, and yet it says enable Python 2. No. So that's a bit weird. So I'm going to put that with Python equals Python, Python 3 back. I don't know why the enable Python library is not working. Um, unless that is only specific to Python 2, possibly. Um, apart from that, everything else that I'd expect to be installed is going to be installed. So just run that once more. Remove this file and build. So once again, it mentions um, the tests are known to fail in the graphical based environment. So I guess I could put this in here, but it's probably going to be some failures. Uh, while that's running, I'll prepare the, yeah, there's a few failures there. I'll go into the graphical session and get the testing ready there. Um, Right, so we have got errors there. So make minus k check. So ibus config has failed. That's not mentioned as a failure. And yeah, it's passed in the text, whether it's because I'm running the test a second time, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm just waiting for a window now again. Okay, iBus key press has failed because of Wayland, it says. Okay, so at the end of that, I've got, let's go to the first set of tests, which are there. I'll tell you what the differences are that I got. Um, so I actually got worse results on the graphical front end for some reason. Uh, IBOS config failed, but XKB Latin layouts didn't fail. Uh, sorry, it did fail. It failed later on. IBUS key press failed like it did as you can see on the screen and XKB Latin layouts failed and IBUS compose failed so the extra one that failed on the graphical um, screen was IBUS config so I'm not sure why that, that failed as extra uh, apart from that everything else passed but on here um, we've got a pass there, but we've got a failure further down, test stress. So it was slightly different, but the same number of errors overall. Um, does say XKB Latin layouts is known to fail, and IBUS Compose fails because it used some locales not installed in LFS. So really, it was the iBus config that shouldn't have failed on the graphical front end, but apart from that, it it's matched everything that's in the book. Right, I've rerun it again, and it's it's run this time. And let's have got the same three failures that are mentioned in the book. Yes, it looked like that is what happened. Yes, yeah, so now I've got exactly what's in the book failing. So I think that the fails maybe just because I ran it 
in the text environment on the screen what you can see. So I'm happy that this is good to install. sudo minus a su and install the package. Configure my OS if GTK3 or 2 are installed. The I model GTK2 has a root user update the cache file of GTK2 or 3 so GTK. Right, so we need to run this twice for GTK3 and then GTK2, so GTK query I modules 2. Okay. So that's iBus built. So really reinstalling the iBus object wasn't absolutely necessary. So I think I'll actually remove that. That didn't make any difference at all. So tidy up iBus. So now we're back to SDL. IBUS list sample rate. Did we do that one? Yes, we did. So STL2, we need pipe wire next. Blue's DBUS G stream. Puzzle the SPC. Well, it looks like we've got all the depend. All oh, right, it needs SDL two for some examples. But SDL two uh, pipe wires optional, so I guess we can probably skip. Um, I suppose we can put them in. Is there any? Comments about the examples? No. And there's nothing about testing them or the fact that they get installed. So I think I'll probably just ignore that and just build pipe wire now. If there's some text in there about building examples or something about using them for testing, then um, I think I would install SDL, come back, install Pipewire, then re reinstall SDL to have the Pipewire dependencies fulfilled. So let's, oh, what am I doing here? Copy that. Pipewire, copy link address. So let's create the temporary build first. Copy the mise on setup. So this switch last special. Right, so HTML documentation, let's have some of that. Manual pages. And Ensure that FFmpeg is enabled as well. Um, D man is true. Oh, right, okay, so that needs doxygen by the looks of it. So I'll have to. Oh, what have I done there? Not put a space in. Yeah, it's not going to work. So let's set that to false in that case. Okay. Oh, it's the documentation. So we can't have that because we haven't got Doxygen. Oh no, it's not. It's because I'm not reading the output right. So this should be 
Docs is true. It's strange it's not true and false, it's true and disabled. But then it says here it can be enabled or disabled for build documentation. So it looks like the, uh, the BLFS book's wrong there again. So enabled. It's obviously changed. Value of true for build man pages. Again, that's changed, obviously. Maybe it used to be true and false. Yeah, it's looking for Doxygen. And Doxygen's for, it just says documentation. So maybe I need to set this to disable then. Yep. There's quite a lot of settings there. So Lib Canberra is an option, but we haven't installed that yet. Oh, it is here. So I'll have to reinstall Pipewire after Lib Canberra has been installed. So rebuild after Lib Canberra with, and I'll put down the configuration that I've used. Okay. So let's go back and check the rest. Web RTC my sofa opus is custom mode for NetJack 2 ROC Jack 2 lib camera Just looking for anything that has been installed, which has been picked up. So the rest of it looks okay. So run the build. Okay, it's done, run the tests. They've all passed. It says if you're upgrading from an early release of Pipewire, you need to remove the older binaries. Otherwise we can install this package. So that's done. Tidy up. And I'll leave that tab there because hopefully LibCamber is not too far away now. Um, Right, I thought we'd done Pulse Audio. I just noticed it's in the tab. Oh, yes, we have. So that needs to be rebuilt, does it? Uh, I assume that needs to be rebuilt. Clip sound file. I need to pulse audio. SBC, I would say that pulse audio has been installed. Uh, certainly installed in the book and it doesn't say rebuild it at any time yeah it's never been rebuilt it's just been put in the first time and that was it so I think that can go lip camera needs pulse audio yeah I think that's been built as we've been doing other dependencies so I am going to remove that. 
Let's see what other we should look at this. It could be the case actually for some of these ones. Oops, sound file. I'm going to get rid of it. So pipe wire needs to be re rebuilt after lip camera. Um, so now we can go to SDL. So we are going to pick up these examples anyway with looks of it because we're now going to build SDL um, because it needed pipe wire. Or it was an optional dependency. We've got pulse audio. We've got graphical environments. So. Uh, when lib camera is done, we're going to rebuild pipe wire. It'll pick up the SDL2 as well, so that's quite convenient. So, yep, SDL2 is the next one. Let's see if this is a rebuild. SDL2. No, uh, oh yes, it is. SDL2 rebuild after ours ibus and pipe wire okay so we can mark that as going to be rebuilt and then yes i've got stl 12 compact which is the next one to build afterwards okay so these two are rebuilds so let's do stl first Paste that and STL compact. Mark that is going to be rebuilt. Put that in. Um, did we do lib sound file? That was in. Pulse audio, wasn't it? Sound for we must have done. It was a requirement. So let's check that one next. Lib sound file. Rebuild after lame MPEG and speaks. Lame MPEG and speaks. So let's look for lame. So we haven't done, oh, I haven't spelled it right. Lame MPEG. So we haven't done MPEG one, two, three. And speaks we've built. So lib sound file needs to be rebuilt after MPEG three. And MPEG one two three. All oh, right, okay, that's okay. So we've got lib sound file there. That's all okay. So it looks like this tab system I'm using this time is slightly different to other times. I normally open all the tabs for all the dependencies. It looks like this might be working a bit better. Right. Okay, so these two are going to be rebuilt, SDL2 and SDL12 compact. Right, so tar six fifth SDL2, it's capitals. So, configure and make, was there any options? No, we don't want to disable anything there. So, copy and paste.
Okay, that's built. So it says don't delete the static libraries until you've done the test. So let's do uh, make install and well, might as well install the documentation again. Oh, no, we didn't build the documentation, did we? So we need to remove that directory. Use a shared dog still two. And probably that one as well, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a case where Doxygen is not producing API, which I thought is what it was always used for. Um, it needs Qt5 and text live. Yeah, I think I may install that, but I'm not going to fuss about it too much. <clears throat> so I'll run the test now. No, it does say none of the resulting binaries need to be installed, but they're installed. Strange. Oh, I forgot about this. This just builds them, but it doesn't run them individually. Right, okay, I forgot about that. It's quite a pain. There's, you'll see these tests here. Uh, I'm not going to go through and test them. Um, you might want to do have a look at a few of them yourself, but I'm not going to um, bother with that. So I'm just going to remove this static library. Uh, will that work? No. Or well, static libraries, there's several here, by the looks of it. And that is. Um, that. And we should run sbld config while logged in as root. Um, I'll just double check. We should have these files, these paths in this configuration. User, sorry, ops lib is there and user local lib, so that's okay. So that is SDL2 rebuilt. And close that down. And we'll now rebuild SDL one to compact. Uh, there's no option, so we'll just copy and paste. And again, it just says the testing builds the test programs, but doesn't actually execute them. You have to run them manually yourself. So I'm not going to bother with that again. Uh, e SU. Just going to install it, remove the static library that's there. And that's that rebuilt. So now we're back to MPEG 12, uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3. That's got all the dependencies in now, including Pulse Audio, which is what it wanted in the first place. So let's put that in there. Uh, this is the first time this is being built, actually. So, MPEG, yeah, is not there. So, let's copy the link and fetch it. So, there's no configuration options other than what's in the book. So we'll just copy and paste and build the package. Run some checks, several passed. 
So we'll now install and that's done. Oh, I've gone back too far. Right, so now I need to see again what it was that needs to be rebuilt. Libsound file. We've got Libsound file next, so I'll mark that as being rebuilt. Paste that in and say that it will be there. Shut that down. Lip sound file. So we've got all the dependencies now in place. So let's once again extract it. Straightforward compilation. Run some tests. That's all passed, so let's install it again or reinstall it. And that's done. So now we're back to Lib Canberra. Um, so we've got a runtime dependency here, which we can put in now actually, because it hasn't got any specific dependencies itself. So let's do that. Copy the link address. So configure it and build it. No test suite. And that looks like that's installed. Yep, that's done. Uh, should have opened that in this tab here. Right, so now we can do lib Canberra. So I don't think this is a rebuild, but I'm going to check. Oh yes, oh yes it is. Hang on, we have rebuilt it according to this. Why was I rebuilding it for Pulse? Oh, because Pulse Audio has already been built. Right, so we don't need to rebuild Lib Canberra because we've previously, earlier, built Pulse Audio, which is what it's for. Okay, so I need to find out. Uh, right, so I've got to rebuild Pipewire anyway because I didn't add in the... Lib, oh, there it is there. Pipe wire. Yeah, Lib Canberra wasn't enabled as I remember. Uh, let's extract that. And so we'll recall the. Yeah, there it is. Uh, MK build CD build as I remember this configuration didn't set up Canberra yeah lib Canberra 
Oh, is it saying that it needs X11 Bell? Is that something it's providing or... Looks like it is, so although we've got it and it probably found it, it's not going to install it. Um, let's have a look at the uh, meson underscore options. Look for Canberra. There it is. So it defaults to auto. So it's a feature, I think that's the one where it has to be enabled or disabled. So let's try, oh, what was it called exactly? Uh, Lib Canberra. So let's try adding minus D Lib, Lib Canberra equals enabled. I've got to do reconfigure. Right, okay, so it didn't find it for some reason, even though Canberra has been installed. Well, no, it hasn't. Oh, so that means I've put it in my list without actually using it. Right, so I need to delete that then. It must have been a case that I was going to build it and I didn't. Um, I'm going to do a global search for that library because I, I don't really know where it might be. Right, so they're the files that are in BLFS. Yep, it's definitely not installed. Okay. So that's the problem with doing manual logs of files. Mistakes can be made, and I've mis made that mistake. Um, I've put it down as package number 349. Um, that was the time it was installed, but it clearly wasn't. So I definitely do need to install it now then. Right. Okay, so uh, I've tied up pipe wire, which I'll have to build anyway again. So let's extract. Canberra, Lib Canberra. And you can see how easy it is to miss things and you come, I've had this before quite a few times where you get something doesn't work and you can't fathom out why it doesn't work, why it doesn't want to build. And it's simply because something like that can be easily missed. You think you've done something, which is why I try and rely on the links and try to open links I'm not sure about in private tabs so that the link color doesn't change. Uh, but it's easy to forget sometimes what you're doing and make the do the wrong open. Right, so I don't want to disable GTK, GTK3, so we'll just take that configure. Build the package and Install it. So that's done. Right, so pipe wires next, but I want, oh, I didn't take a copy of the name for that. Where was this one? I want to see what else needs to be rebuilt for Lib Canberra.
So, okay, looks like it's just pipe wire. So that's okay. That's okay. That That's good because that explains why I've left it so late. There hasn't been any specific dependencies. So now pipe wire is going to be rebuilt, which we built a few packages back. So I'll mark that as being built now. Okay, so let's extract pipe wire again. And I'm going to, well, create the temporary dire directory. I kept a copy of the setup that I used. So I'm going to copy that again paste that in here and hopefully um, Canva will be set on this time and yes it's been found now because it obviously exists so that's good so ninja to build it Okay, so Ninja test to test it, they've all passed. I'll run this anyway, although it's probably not necessary because I imagine this is removing versioned file names, um, which would get overwritten because it's the same version, but I'll run it anyway. So, okay, it doesn't look like they, like they were versioned. Maybe the files file names have changed over time. Um, but now I'll just install and that's done. So that's pipe wire rebuilt. So now we go back to Inkscape. Um, right, this has still got a few. Yeah, I, I realized last night that what I normally do, because Inkscape has got so many requirements and it opens up this big black hole of dependencies, that I normally leave it until much later in the build. And that's why I um, spent hours installing all these extra dependencies because I didn't decide not to. I, I decided to build Inkscape as part of this dependency tree of building for Falcon browser. So that's why I've got lost doing maybe a couple of hundred more dependencies, maybe unnecessarily at this point, um, but not necessarily later on. It just means the later packages will be quicker to install. But of course it has delayed, as you've seen, getting onto the uh, GUI with a browser. Uh, which is a bit unfortunate and obviously you've missed the tests that I've not been able to record as I've been testing them on the GUI. Um, so it's a little bit of a mistake. It's probably because I haven't installed Beyond Linux from scratch for a while and as I said at the beginning of the videos, I haven't done any test runs of this build. You're, you're seeing me build it for the first time, um, which is why some things are not working what well, some things aren't as smooth as perhaps you might imagine it would be um so that was pipe wire now imagine we needed pipe wire for something else that's not here that has been built since um
So I think I can't remember what this was for now. An education demon. Build after Lib Canberra. Oh right, okay. I can't remember what that was. I wonder if it was a some file at STL. Right, they can be deleted. Oh, there is a note here. Required for lib notify runtime. So lib notify must be installed by something else along the way. So I think I can do notification demon and get that out of the way. Save having that hanging around. Okay, I'll put a note so needed to be built after Lib Canberra. Uh, so let's go to that next. Right, yeah, so that makes sense. Four lib notify, wasn't it? Four lib notify. Uh, just checking something else. Okay, um, so let's do the notification daemon. Uh, have I downloaded this? No. So let's copy that link address. Um, so, the command is added to ensure the steam packages. Right, okay. So, I'll just copy and paste the instructions to build this. There's no test suite. So, we'll install it. And you can test the notification demon with the command notify send. Right, so can I, again, I can only do this on a graphical front end. So I'll try this out to see if it works p grep minus l notification dash da and then notify send minus i info information quotes high dollar user comma this this is a test, close quotes, valid number, oh, okay, that's the American keyboard coming up. Instead of quotes, I've got at signs. Okay. 
Okay, it says notification not provided by any dot service files. Um, so I'm not sure why that's not running. Uh, we've got all the dependencies. I'll shut down the uh, GUI and start it up again in case that's the issue. No, it's still not working, so there might be something that we've still got to build. Although the fact that these requirements are in Yeah, it's like the service not running. The name org for free desktop notifications is not provided by any service files. Contains a daemon that displays. So I'm not really sure how the daemon starts. I presume it's this notify sender activates it. So I wonder if we should try that later on when we finish a bit more of the installation. Um, to see if that works then. But apart from that, everything else is in. We've got GTK3, although admittedly GTK3 is due to be reinstalled, I believe. Uh, yes, there it is there. Um, I can't imagine that should be a problem. So I'll I did install this, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just have to try that at a later time. So I'll shut that down. I think I can probably get rid of that tab now. Yep. Let's get rid of that. So back to Inkscape. I'm going to take another look at Image Magic. We've done such a lot. We might be quite, quite close to <clears throat> actually having a lot of these installed. And apart from GIMP, I'd say that's probably true. Let's have a look at GIMP. Again, this looks like it's mostly installed. Uh, most of the dependencies. But I think to get, rather than install these utilities, which we'll be installing anyway, I think I'm going to avoid them. Oh, it is a runtime anyway, Image Magic. Avoid and, and just concentrate back on to getting the GUI browser installed. So Image Magic will have to be a re uh, well, sorry, Inkscape will have to be rebuilt for Image Magic. Um, might as well carry on with Image Magic now. I've got this far, I guess. Sorry, not Image Magic, Inkscape. Um, yeah, so I'll skip Image Magic for now. A little CMS, we've got a little CMS, little CMS too, so we'll skip that. It's unnecessary. Let's, let's go to Poe Trace. So we can do that one. Copy link address. Okay. 
choice. Right, it looks like there's no separate options to adjust unless you want to set the different paper size. Um, help if I go into the source directory. So build that. And run the tests. That's all good. And install. So next we've got cache control, which is a Python module that needs message pack. It looks like we've got all these other options installed. So let's put that one in. There's a cursor gone. Cursor disappears every now and then. Paste that in. Run the build and then install it. There's a cursor gone again. I think I might have a dirty sensor. Uh, right, so that's installed. Shut that down and we now do cache control. So again, all these modules seem to have very similar instructions. It just seems to be mostly the installation that's different. And that's done. So next CSS select. Looks like we have all of these. There's another Python module. Build it, install it. Oh, it. Looks like I forgot to run test before. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, oh dear. Right, I'm not thinking, I'm thinking about the test. I'm not sure if I tested the test previously. Uh, so that was CSS select. I need to fetch PY test tarball again. Uh, LXML we've done. Pretty sure we've done that one. Yep, numpy. Oh, there's an extra package there for testing. So let's copy that. So build. Install. 
tool. Test it with these commands. Okay, so there's some skips and there's an expected failure there as well, so that's all okay. Clear that one up. Now we're on to NumPy. it Okay, I don't know what that was doing there, but it took quite a long time compared to how long these builds normally take. Uh, but let's now install it. And run the tests.
Okay, so we had, um, well, it looked like there was failures there, but the report at the end says 187 skipped, 1300 deselected, 30 are expected fails, and 5 are unexpected passes. Um, but there's no actual outright failures for the looks of it, but that all that lot is put against the fact that there's 36,000 tests, or over nearly 37,000 tests passed, so uh, that looks pretty good to me. So let's tidy that up now. And close that down, back to Inkscape, need PY Serial. So yes, another Python module. So build the package. And install it. That's, oh, there's some test py test. That's done. Next we've got Scour, which is another Python module. So it looks like there's no testing on this one. Just install it, and that's done. And looks like finally G spell. And it looks like we've got all the dependencies for that. Okay, there's no options here. Run the build. Now it says the tests for this one need to be run in the next session, so I'll get back to the GUI. And change into the directory we're in G spell. And run make check. And I've got one failure there for test checker, which it says is known to fail because Hun spell is not installed. So that's fine. Make install and it's done. So now finally I can install Inkscape. And obviously I'm not going to be able to show this after it's installed, but I can test it and You'll see it anyway when I finally get into the browser because it needs to be rebuilt for something. I can't remember what now. Uh, I think it needs to be rebuilt. Maybe not. Well, I can show you that anyway. So let's now fetch the package. And while that's downloading, I'll put it into my list.
So extract the package. And create a temporary directory. Copy of the CMake command. And I notice there's just one thing I want to add on, which is this dbus on. And that allows you to use Inkscape with interactive scripts which manipulate images. And it sounds like that could be useful. Uh, right. I've done the trick of not changing into the directory. Inkscape, right, okay. So it's a differently named directory from the tarball. So let's try oops, that CMake command again, which is that one there. And it says it doesn't recognize that. Image magic. Oh yes, that was it. It was image magic, wasn't it? That's why we're going to reinstall it. So where the mouse is on, I'm going to be general. So it doesn't look like that's an option available anymore. So I'll have to remove that. So again, it looks like maybe the manual needs to be updated for this package. So I'll rerun that. There's no warnings now, so that's good. So I'll put a little note, rebuild after rebuild after image magic and do not add the D minus D with D plus equals on as it doesn't work or well, it's not recognized as it is not recognized okay so I shall start the build now and I'll time it because I'm not sure how long this will take come back when it's done
Okay, so uh, that's built. It does say it does occasionally fail when building multiple processors. So I'd suggest if that happens, um, just rerun make um, a couple of times, it should get it through. And if you do have persistent failures, then use make minus J1. So let's install the package now. And it looks like we need to run these two commands to update some icons. And that's done. So the only way I can test this is to run it from the terminal. I'd expect it to work because obviously it's uh, a graphical program and it's there's no uh, errors being built. Uh, yeah, it's come up with a quick setup menu. I, I don't use this, so I'm not really sure how to start it. Um, but yeah, it's like there's graphics and options are working, so uh, that seems to be working fine as far as I can see. Yeah, so I'll just quit that and tidy up so that's installed for now um, so this add way to icon theme is next and this has been waiting for Inkscape so let's put that in, let's see if I've got this information about this. Oh, so it has been built and does say rebuild after Inkscape. So <clears throat> I'll mark that as being built or rebuilt, sorry. in that it's been rebuilt. Let's copy that again. Oh, didn't copy that right. Okay. So I don't need to download anything. There it is there. Figure and make to build it. And install it. So that's done. That now back to GTK plus three, which is a rebuild. Um, so we're waiting for this. We've got all these ones. Yeah, so just need this PYATI. SP2 with the looks of it to be installed. So that's a configure. And installed and it's done. So this should be ready for GTK3 with a full set of options. 
So let's put this in and I'll just look again to see if this satisfies any rebuild options. Right, there's one here, lib input. So it says rebuild after GTK3 and possibly Java for J unit tests that fail. So I'll copy, let's make that GJS rebuild after GTK3 for and sysprof. So we've done all them. So again, that can be rebuilt. Uh, so I'll mark that as being rebuilt. Copy GJS. Yep. Okay, so we've got to rebuild GTK plus, then rebuild um, lib input, and then rebuild GJS, and that'll be those dependencies fully satisfied. Satisfied. So let's extract GTK plus dash three. And um, create the build directory. Copy the meson setup. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. I want to uh, remove these. Remove these two as well. Right, so let's paste that again. Check the options. So domain is true. So documentation I can add. And tracker three we've got as well. Oh, and sysprof as well, by the looks of it. And that was that one that's not mentioned. Let's try and rerun that again. Minus D. Configure. Oh no, okay, so it isn't. File support. Uh, was this prof one of the options? Oh no, it's not. Maybe it's not using that profiler then. Okay, so I'll, I'll ignore that then. I don't want to start customizing this too much. Uh, so I'll just run Ninja to build it then. Right, so that's built. So I'm going to run the test and I've straight away I've got windows appearing. So I'm just going to click all of those and they're appearing on test 67 at the moment, not 194. I'll just wait for the rest of the test to complete. Okay, um, I've got one that's failed. 
um, meson internal test. So I don't know if that's because of taking too long to click for one of these windows to appear. Um, but out of 193 again, that's okay. satisfied with that so uh, I think I'll install this Okay, so that's installed. Now I've probably already done this. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna check it. Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, sorry, it's the directory, okay. So it probably does exist then. Okay, no, it doesn't. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to copy all of this to create that, and I'm also going to create it as the root so that we've got a system wide version as well. So let's take a look to see if this exists. It doesn't, so what I'm going to do is copy the same settings into this file so that any new user gets those settings as well. Um, and then there's this option here for enabling the scroll bars. So I'll do that as well if I haven't done it already. And I presume I can put that in the system wide GTK folder as well. So let's become root again. Edit this file gtk.css so that the scroll bars by default are on. Um, oh, it looks like that's a pending actually, isn't it? So maybe that is only a per user option. GTK CSS. All right, there's nothing in there already. So maybe I can add it to that file let's put it in there and that's done so that's GTK uh, plus version 3 installed or reinstalled rather I should say version 3 tidy that up 
and now we're going to reinstall lib input so i'll have to find that one that looks like that might be a Python so go to the no chunks which is that one there all oh, right it's an xorg input driver right so Let's click on that. Extract. Oh yes, it was. That's interesting. These aren't. Oh, because I'm on the chunked one, that's right. Uh, sorry, the non-chunked one. So if I go back, that would be better to do that. And go to Xorg. Um, input drivers. Lib input. That's better. I can see now straight away that these have indeed been all um, used. Or installed, rather. So... Make the build. Uh, let's change these settings now. So this switch disables the creation of visual debug helper for input. So we can remove it if we want, so why not? It may be something we never use, but it's something we can play around with possibly to find out if it is something useful. Test is false. Even the test to define as false, you can still run the first form. Minor tests are regularly used, but won't be skipped if PI passing is not installed. All oh, right. Okay. So it relies on. Oh yes, this user level driver support. So we can put that as true, for example, or remove them. Um, the Wacom, we've got that installed. I don't have the tab, but may as well put that in. And we need this because, uh, in the case of value, oh, it does no harm. So we don't actually need that last option because we're using user. Um, we can't set documentation to true because we haven't got Doxygen, so we'll just leave it like that. And run Ninja. Then Ninja tests. So this is a very large number of tests will run, um, which I don't call 30 a large number, but it says one test fails and well, and now we've got a lot of skips, so it might be because it's not being run in the GUI, so I'll try that. CD lib input, forward slash build. And ninja test. No, it's, it's skipped the same number. It's exactly as you see it. So, uh, don't know. Oh, the Valgrin, that's why, because Valgrin's not installed. I've just noticed that. So, that's all I write. All right. Uh, install the package. And there's no documentation to install because we didn't build it. Lib input. So that's done. Next we've got to rebuild GJS. So GJS. And 
this was because oh yes yeah, because of three and four oh right it's recommended and but it's required for gnome and we've also got sysprof as well so let's extract that one gjs make the build directory copy the meson setup let's check the options so we can add in profiler enabled now and just check the options they look all good so let's build this now rebuild it run the tests so we've got a few options a few failures there right looks like they need a display so once again I'll switch to the display cdgjs slash build ninja test Um, oh no, it's GJS, sorry, GJS build. That's why it's a different name because there's already a build directory. So yeah, that's gone through a lot quicker again and also everything's passed, 72 uh, that have been marked as okay, so that's fine. So now let's reinstall this and that's GJS rebuilt. Okay, and now I've got GNOME Desktop. So let me check this one now. Right, Color D has got to be rebuilt after GNOME Desktop. We've got that coming up anyway. Color D G T K insane. Okay, so and no online accounts. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's anything else affected by this. Um, and it doesn't look like it's a rebuild either. In fact, let's check with the whole name. Uh, Gnome Desktop. No, just the color D mentions that it's got to be rebuilt after Gnome Desktop. So, this is a fresh build. Put that in. Copy the link address and fetch it. So what have we got here? Let's run Meson setup with the tests. Oh. It, does, it says it doesn't come with a test suite, so okay, I'll ignore that then. I'll just run as it is and then run Ninja. And then install it and it's done. So now we're on to Color D. So this, as I say, is a rebuild. So it says it needs GNOME Desktop, Color D GTK, which is that one. Oh yes, I see. It's the two that are still blue. So I'll mark this as being rebuilt. Rebuild. 
built and just check to see if it's got any impact on anything else. No, it hasn't. Okay. So we need to build color DGTK first. Looks like we've got all the dependencies for this. And we've got color D already installed. It will be rebuilt. So let's do this first. It's gone again. Copy link address. And now we can build this. So let's make, oh, what's this? Building documentation, Ninja J1 must be used, all right. Let's copy the meson setup command. Let's check the options. So I've turned on GTK2 for VA API, uh, sorry, Vela. Docs is false. We haven't got the name space version of doc book. XSLs we found out before. So we have to leave docs and man false. Yeah, it doesn't even mention them as external dependencies, those two, uh, those namespace versions. So let's now build this with Ninja. Run test. Oh, it needs to be run from an X session again. So once again, I'll nip over here. Color D GTK CD build and Ninja test. Right, this is putting Windows up on the screen. Right, and I've got two failures. Yeah, I'm not sure why that is. Um, let's see what happens when I do. Ninja test here. Oh, it says it may require a color profile for your primary display. Yeah, this is exactly the same as what I see. Um, so I'm not sure why that is. Let's do an LD config. So that makes any difference. Yeah, I'm not sure what quite what's mentioned by the errors that are there. So I'm not, not sure about that, but I certainly haven't got a profile, so I'm assuming that's the reason why it's not running. So I'll just install this as it is. And tidy that up. Next, we've got the SANE package. Now this is for scanners. Um, I'm not going to install for any particular scanner at all. Um, this needs GIMP. Oh, it said we need a kernel setup. Couldn't see any specific options being mentioned there. Um, I imagine that's probably because you can scan directly from GIMP into GIMP. Um, so I'm not going to do GIMP at the moment, but I can mark this down to rebuild after GIMP. Um, so let's fetch the downloads. So we've got no other backends. And the only front end we've got is GIMP, so like I say, that'll be a 
a rebuild. Put this in. Rebuild after GIMP. Um, so let's do sudo minus ESU. Add the scanner group. Configure assumes that the user building sane backends is a member of the scanner group for testing existence of this group. So the user building the package should be added to the scanner group as a root user. Do this. And that will be kern text. After adding the scanner root, you need to log out and back in to activate it. So let's do that. Go back in. Oops. CD sources BNFS. So if I don't do groups, you can see I've got scanner there. For USB scanner, if you're linking to libUSB, include the configure switch to enable libUSB. Okay, so let's extract sane front ends, I imagine. Oh, install the sane back ends by running the phone commands. Right, so sane back ends we need. this in and it says we need to enable that enable lib usb i've only ever used or owned a scuzzy scanner once but the rest have been usb so it's probably imperative to add that especially these days um, so there's an explanation of the options there but nothing to add so let's run that now. Okay, so it looks like we've got all the options that we'd expect to see. So let's now run the build. Okay, that's done. Let's do the tests. Looks like that's failed. Um, is it because we're not on the graphical front end? Uh, see the same back ends, and we're in a build directory. No, we're not. No, that's still failed. Um, oh, I haven't logged out of this. And attach myself to the scanner group. So let's check that. Right, that's there now. So CD sources. BLFS. Sane. Backends, make, check. No, it's still failing with the same errors as you can see. Um, Right, yeah, you only need a graphical environment for the front end. Um, I don't know why this test is failing. Unless it's because I haven't got any 
um, drivers installed like in the kernel as it says up here um, so that's probably why it's failing I've got nothing to test against so I'll skip that because like I say I'm only really interested in getting it in the system at the moment so it's on the system um, but obviously if I wanted to use this in fact it does say how to test it here um, and I'll have to do a bit of work in the kernel for configuring that so I'll just go straight ahead to install it so that's done now do the installation of the front end we've got all the options here all the commands rather so we can just copy and paste this and then become the root user to install it and that's done so it says if GIMP was linked into the build which it hasn't been at the moment we would run that command and we can try doing this as well when we've got GIMP so I'm going to tidy up so that's sane and I've got it to rebuild after GIMP back to color D we can now reinstall this So I don't need to add the group or user, they should already exist. So I put this set command in, create the temporary build directory, copy the meson setup, we'll check the options. So docs equals false, we've got GTK doc, so we can set that to true, and dman equals false, that says it needs a namespace version of docbook XSL style sheets, which we haven't got, so I'll leave that as false. So that is now ready to build with Ninja. And we can install it first. And what's that done there? It's just listed something for some reason. It's part of the install, interesting. And we can run Ninja test. Will fail if the package is already installed, which it is because we're running test now. Um, and this probably needs to be run in a graphical session for the looks of it. So we'll go back one into color D build ninja test. Okay, yeah, I've still got that error. Um, Color D self test. Well, no, Color D self test actually run. Oh no, it's not the demon one. Uh, color D test. Oh yes, Color D test team. Demon is the name of the. It's exactly like what you can see on the screen. It's just the test number is different for some reason. On the GUI it's one of four, on the screen it's three of four, but um, apart from that everything else is the same. So that's known, so that's okay. That's color D finished with.
Right, color D is finished with. We would now come up to QT. Um, so I think we've got everything installed there. GST plug. I've got a note here to reinstall GST plugins base after all options have been built. So, all right, okay, yeah, we've got still some stuff to do. So. to check some of these um, GST plugins base right I've got open CV needs to be rebuilt after open uh, sorry GST plugin base And I've got GStream and needs to be rebuilt after all options built as well. Um, and GStream is a requirement of this one. So I'm going to take a look at GStreamer. And it doesn't look like I've rebuilt GStreamer at any point. So I'm going to mark this as being GStreamer being rebuilt. and then put that down to be built next or rebuilt rather and then look for plug-in space again Open CV needs to be rebuilt after plugins base. Oh, there's several there. And Java and Numpy looks like I reckon we've done most of them. So I'll mark that as being rebuilt as well. So that's Open CV. CV after GST plugins base. Right, um, I'll do one more search for GST plugins base. No, there's nothing else missing. Right, so I think what needs to be done is GStream's got to be rebuilt. I presume that's for maybe GTK3 or GSL, probably GTK3 maybe. Um, and then Plugins needs to be restored. I'm going to have to check each one of these because things like Paranoia haven't been installed, obviously. Um, graphene, I'm not sure about, um, but certainly it will need to be reinstalled again, as you can see, after QT anyway. Uh, just to be sure all the dependencies are linked correctly. And then finally, as I say, OpenCV would need to be built as well. So if I do these in order, let's get that tab duplicated. Go home, 
look for open CV. Yeah, there's a few there that like Zinnilib, so its prime reason was because GST plugins base is a recommended package. Um, but I would suggest that all the rest have been installed now. We've got Apache Ants and so on. So I think once that's done, oh, maybe I need to just double check these because I've just noticed libmng is not highlighted there. So I'll have to check that. But I think just about everything else is installed and we can build Qt5 then. So let's see if we can get that all sorted out. So GStreamer, rebuild. So create a build directory. Copy me and set up again. Check for any options. There aren't any. So now let's build it again. Okay, ninja test. Okay, uh, one will skip, the rest pass. Now, although it's not a previous version that we've got installed, I'm going to run this anyway. That's the root. And then just install it. And just look at that option. I think that's probably something to do with the file system. Maybe something needs to be turned on in the kernel. So that's GStreamer reinstalled. So I'll mark that down as being rebuilt now and get rid of that tab. So GST plugins, I need to check individually. I know we've got our Salib done, I'm sure of that. CD Paranoia, well it's obvious that we haven't done that. So let's put that in. Okay, copy the link to download and the patch. Doesn't support parallel build, there's no extra special options, so I'll just copy and paste the commands to build it. There are no tests, so we become root and install it, and that's that done. So we'll close that one down. So object intro spectrum, pretty sure that's in. We've got the file there. I'll check on my list as well. Yep, it needs a rebuild as well. Uh, let's have a look to see what it needs a rebuild after. Okay, that's something we could do now actually, before we do this, being as a dependency. Um, it needs Cairo, GJS, GTK, Doc, Mako, Markdown. Then it says after that it's installed to install ATSPI core. GTK, PixBuff and Pango need to be restored as per GTK plus two requirements. So there's quite a lot of information there.
So this would lead on to rebuilding of GTK2. Right, um, let me get object introspection up. So we have got all those dependencies, I'm sure of that. So I think what I'll do is I'll mark this as going to be rebuilt. Um, have to copy these two and insert that just before plugins base. So we can see we're rebuilding it. And then the bit about uh, after object intro inspection is installed ATSPI core GTK PIX buff and PAG only to be reinstalled as per GTK2 requirements. So I'll copy that bit and, and just leave a note. I'll do that after we've got the graphical browser installed, I think, because I think there's a few packages that are going to need to be re reinstalled because of GTK2. So I'm just going to paste that. Oops, I didn't copy it. So copy that, I'll just paste that down the bottom here. And I'll just put here that this has now been rebuilt, will be rebuilt in a moment. And then carry on concentrate on getting QT built, QT5 built, and then obviously ultimately Falcon. So, um, yeah, let's rebuild object introspection next. We'll rebuild it. So, tiles, object. So, we can add in. GTK doc equals true to build documentation. We've got Cairo now, which we might not have had before. And we can add this in as well because we've got those two. That's all good. Ninja to build. Ninja test all passed and we can install it again. So that's object introspection finished. So GST plugins again, so ISO codes I need to check. Yeah, we've got that. Let me check the spreadsheet. Right, that looks like that's not. Oh no, it's a space. ISO codes has been installed. LibGU dev, I think we've done that one. Yep, it's been rebuilt, in fact. There it is, there. JPEG Turgo, I'm sure we've done that. So I'm checking both of these because we've done a lot of packages that may have been picked up on the way. I'm unsure which ones I've actually looked at and not built, so I want to be sure that I'm not missing anything out um, and risk having a failure of one of these bigger packages. So libjpeg Turgo, yeah, libog, I'm sure, libpng, I'm sure. Libsyora 4, but Vorbis Mesa must be because I've got a GUI. 
Pango, let's double check that one. Rebuild after sysprof. Okay, so I could do that now. So I'll mark that as being built or rebuilt rather. And I'll rebuild that now. So that's going directly after um, just sorry, just before GST plugins base. So that's a rebuild. Uh, Wayland protocols, I'm sure, in. Yep. Graphene, that's one I'm not sure about. Yep, that's been installed. GTK3, we've got Opus, I'm pretty sure we've got. Just says rebuild after text live and SDL2, I know we've got as well. So. All we've got to do before we build GST plugins base is to build rebuild Pango with sysprof. So tar minus XPF Pango dash one. So I've got a fix here and make the build directory. Copy the means and set up command. Go back and see what else we can do. We don't want to disable garbage because into our inspection. We've got that. So it's just to add the profile, which there isn't a an option marked up there. So um, what I'll do is abort that. Look at the meson underscore options. Look for profile. Oh, it's called sysprof on this one. So I need to do sysprof enabled. So let's quit that. Bring back the meson command and do sysprof equals enabled. Right, what have I done wrong there? Sysprof. So it's by default disabled, so why isn't that working? Let's try it without. This prof support is false. Right, it's actually come up with. Oh, right, it's not actually come up there. So you can use meson minus h, meson minus h dot dot I imagine. Oh that's interesting. So um it looks like Oh no, these are meson specific, aren't they? Look at that. Sys option sysprof. So this is a look at some of these other options. Build type, wrap mode. Let's try changing that then. Enable. 
Boot. Meson setup wipe. Meson setup wipe. Right, that should be set up, uh, run as part of this then. Yeah, now it's set it, so I'm not sure why. I might be putting in the options wrong, possibly. Uh, oh, yes, is it the minus D with these meson commands, actually? That might be what it is. As you can probably tell, I don't use meson normally. Disabled. Let's try that. So minus D sysprof enabled. I have to put the wipe in again. But it seems to have accepted it this time. But it's still not set it to enabled yet. Oh, I've set it to disable for some reason. That's better. Okay, so it was a minus. So I'm assuming these switches are directly aimed at Meson, and the minus D capital D options are the switches directly aimed at configuring the package. Um, so I've learned something new there. Right. So now let's run Ninja. Don't want the API documentation. Let's run the tests. We've got two that have been skipped, but apart from that, we've got a full pass. So now let's install it and let's pango reinstalled. So that's been rebuilt and we're okay to reinstall GST plugins base now. Um, until it needs to be rebuilt for QT. So I'll just put that needs to be rebuilt after QT. And we'll copy this. Right, I'm not going to change the options, so I'll just copy the rest of this. And it says it needs an X terminal running. So I'll prepare that while it's building. Okay, that's built and running the test now. There's 119 of them. It's come up with a window pop up. So I'll just get rid of them. Open GL tests they were. It skipped some tests and it's on the last two at the moment. And now it's on the last one. Pipelines GL launch lines. So it's got a timeout of 180 seconds and it's done 20 seconds. So it might be a little while. Right, it's actually completed. It skipped 21 but passed 98, so that's all good. When installing build process, does some additional linking. If you do not have Xorgan user, the lib library path needs to be defined for the user. Okay, so let's do sudo minus e su. And then echo. Right, it's not there. But we've got the profiles that are set up for Xorg. So I imagine. Yeah, we've got xdg variables, xorg, config, and prefix. 
So I think I'm happy that the environment is okay. We can double check. Oops. What happens? So. Oh, sorry, if you do not have Xorg in, in user, sorry, we do. So it's all okay. I'm worrying about nothing. So let's tidy that up. So finally back to OpenCV. Um, right, we've got FFmpeg, we've just done that. We've got three. Jasper, I'm pretty sure we've got. Yep. Uh, Libxif, I'm sure we've got that as well. Got to rebuild that after graph is libjpg turbo png tiff web p. Let's check web p lib web p. Yep. V for l utils, which we've got to rebuild after Qt. Zinnilib we haven't done, so let's do that. Right, so this will need to be rebuilt. Uh, is this a optional? No, it's a recommended. Lib A. Lib MNG. Right, I think I might just build this as it is for the moment and be concerned about these other ones afterwards so rebuild it after we've got the browser up and running so insert a line put this in and then rebuild after all these here so image magic lib a52 lib dvd css Lib mad lib mng so I think some of them are going to be possibly things that need to be run in the GUI so I won't concern myself too much with them at the moment So let's fetch this. And build it. We've got yeah, we've got a few options here. Let's take a look at that. Disable VCD. So we haven't got that. Right, I haven't installed the. Oh, yes, I have. Yes, libdvd now. So we can leave that in. Documentation to install the version directory. Disable v, VAPBI if we haven't got libva or glue, but we have. So we'll just accept the defaults. Build it. Okay, there's no test suite, so we'll install it. <clears throat>
Okay, once again, there's a note there about if you've not got Xorg in user, which we have, so. Um, so has to pass the minus E variable. We didn't build the API documentation, so that's Zinilib for now. So I think we're now ready to install or reinstall OpenCV. Is it a reinstall? I think it's a reinstall. Yes, it is. Right, so I need to put rebuild against this. And we'll extract it. Uh, all right, okay. Dash four. Make sure I extract the right one. Highlighting. So we've got the optional modules, so we'll extract them now. Copy the, we'll make the build directory and change into it. Let's see if there's any other options to add in here or to change. No, there's nothing mentioned apart from we'll need to add this one, the looks of it. instructs the build system to build additional modules yeah we need that and we've got Zinilib this time because we just built it oh yes this is one where it says it downloads this IPP ICV file, so it's just done that. Looks like it's downloading some other files as well. Okay, that's done. Let's build it. Let's time this again. Uh, oh, yeah, let's check these options here. So it's building against Java, but looks, uh, sorry, Ant. It's not building against Java for some reason. I wonder if I need to specify that. Um, let's see what other things should be set yeah I think that's the only thing so I'll run rerun the oh it's a CMake I'm not sure how to find out about these options know anything about CMake. Uh, let's do CMake minus minus help. Module list, let's try that help. Module list, no. Help variable list, let's try that one. Help variable list. Uh, 
best can do is guess. Um, build with Java. on no, that didn't work I was found the Java native interface okay maybe that's enough then okay I won't bother with Messing around with something I'm not really sure about then. Oops. Put a hash in there. Right, so just build it like that and run make and wait for it to build.
Right, so that has built. Let's now install it. And that's done. So we'll shut that one down, and now we've got QT5. Um, half pass we've got, I see we've got Jas, we've got Libd. Right, so this LibMNG we need next, which has got dependencies we've already fulfilled. Okay, let's extract it. And straightforward instructions to build it, no test suites. So become root and install it, and that's done. PNG, TIFF, WebPX, where can be common, MISA, MT, DEV, right, I'm not sure about that one. Yes, we've done that. PCR2, SQLite, Wayland, they're all part of Xorg. T3, IBUS, LIB input, MariaDB. MTDev. Right, they've listed that twice for some reason, so it's right in one of these, but not both, I wouldn't have thought. And PCI Utils, not installing that. <clears throat> okay, so QT, we're ready to build. So, as I said before, I've already downloaded these to save time waiting for them. Um, I've got it is saying rebuild QC. Oh, yes, if QCA has been installed or you're reinstalling or updating this package, QCA will need to be reinstalled. QCA uh, looks like I haven't installed it yet. Oh, it's after this, the looks of it. Okay. So I don't I can remove that note then about rebuilding it. That's probably just a reminder that the note's there in case I missed it. Um, PCI tools. I just noticed I've got PCI utils in my list, but it must be for something else because it's not here. No. Right, so let's extract the QT table. Okay, QT everywhere, source. So export this variable, that's the place we're going to install it to. Um, sometimes the installation paths are hard coded into installed files. This is the reason why Alt QT5 uses installation prefix. So we need to remember to do this after the installation, I presume, because if it is hard coded, it might um, build into just opt to QT and then there'll be files from a previous version left there. <clears throat> so it'd probably be better if it was put at the end of the build 
to do this, but um, I have to try and remember to do it beforehand before I've uh, finished. Uh, so we're not reinstalling. We've reinstalled all the, oh, sorry, installed all the dependencies. Um, there's an option there about removing the no make line to avoid building the tutorials and examples so we can build them if you wish to. Let's patch, create a directory, <clears throat> a fix for building with GCC 13 and then we'll copy the configure command. Um, we need to remove the no make line to build the example so let's do that obviously if you don't want them then just leave it in um, and let's see what else there is we can do with this system sql confirm my open source Was linked open SSL link to syslog skip QT web engine so build that se separately and so there's no extra options they're just explaining what's there and the reason why so we'll configure Okay, we can have a quick look. I'll say quick look. The list is quite extensive. Just scan down to make sure that nothing doesn't seem out of place. Generally, I tend to look for anything that says no to see if there's anything missing that shouldn't be missing. So, most of it's yes. The ones that are no are either something I don't know about, don't recognize which means it's probably not in the BLFS book. So, so you can see we've got MySQL has been identified, ODBC we installed, PostgreSQL we didn't install so it's not been recognized. We've got SQLite and it's using the system one. So it's all good. So it looks like, yeah, it's found GStreamer 1, but it's not found an older version, so that's good. Um, so, yep, that looks all good, what what would expect. So let's time the build and wait a while for it to finish.
So that's built all successfully. Uh, there's no test suite, so we'll just install it. Um, should really make sure that the Qt5 prefix, prefix environment variable is set. So I'm going to enter root like that, um, especially as there's other things to do. So I'm just going to check that it is set. It looks like it is. Yes, it is. So uh, now I'm going to do make install. So that's done. I've um, got to remove some references to the build directory from some dependency files, library dependency files. So that's that. Um, install images and create the menu entries for installed applications. The Qt5 binder variable is used here to point to the directory for executable programs. If you've changed the binder above, Qt binder will need to be adjusted. So we haven't, so Qt5 prefix will be used to um, build up the binder. Uh, so you can see there's the prefix. So they'll add, that'll add bin onto it where the binaries for Qt will be built. So we can copy this, all of this in. Uh, then it says some packages such as VLC, which we haven't installed yet, but probably will do. <clears throat> I think there's a dependency on some packages. Um, look for certain executable, executables with a dash qt5 suffix. So run the following command as user to create a link to those files with the qt. So you can see the original file is called mock. And we've created a link called mock dash qt5 and so on. Configuration if sudo is installed, qt5 dash available as the user as well. So qt5 dir has that been set yet? I'm not sure if I've seen that. No, it hasn't. Uh, all right, that's created as part of the profile. So We'll copy that into the sudoers configuration. We didn't install Qt5 in user. So we come down here, add the library path for Qt to the search paths in LDSO conf. And we've just loaded the, reloaded the library cache again. And then we create an extra profile file that will be loaded, which include, includes this qt 5 dir So we should get that when we re-log in. And then the last thing to do, if you remember, go to the top, is to run these two commands. So at the moment, in opt, all we've got is qt 5 So this will create a version directory and then point the um, Uh, it will link the Qt5 directory to uh, that version. So, uh, where is it? Oh, sometimes there is one. Alt install new memory name directory and create a symlink. Right, I thought this looked a bit strange. Um, Yeah, this is making the directory. This is what you do at the beginning. Uh, I did think it looked a bit strange. All we've done at the moment is created an empty directory called Qt5. And yet it's telling us to do this at the end after installation is complete. So this doesn't rename the directory and create a symlink. It creates the version directory and then creates the 
symlink to that version directory. So that's what you do beforehand. So you can see um, that's an empty directory we've just created. And we've tried to create a link to that, but we can't because the we've installed it to Qt5. So what we need to do is to, I'm going to change into the op directory just to make things a little bit easier. We need to re remove this empty directory we've just created. We need to move Qt5 to the version directory and then run this option to create the sim link. So it would have been better to do these at the beginning, I think, rather than telling us to do it at the end. And it's like I say, it's wrong instructions anyway. So now you can see we've got a sim link Qt5 and the programs we've installed are pointing at Qt5. That points at a version directory. So in the future, if we update Qt5, all we need to do is install Qt5 into that version directory and just repoint the link at that new version. So um, what we should do next is uh, tidy up. Uh, just see how big that directory is, see how much space was taken up doing the install. Sixteen gigabytes quite a size. So I'll tidy that up. Okay, what I'm gonna do is log out now, log back in again to allow all those settings to cascade through so that if I now do echo QT QT five, that directory is pointing at opt five. And if we do ls minus l dollars dollar qt5 duh you can see there's the files inside qt5 and there is the directory itself so that's qt5 um, you might recall there's quite a few programs to rebuild after qt5 but i'll leave that until we're into the gui proper with the browser so I think we can close Qt5 down now. Um, now we've got Qt5 built, we can build QCA. So let's change into BLFS once more. We've got all the dependencies that we need. So let's now build QCA. Copy link address. I don't think this is downloaded. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, I've already downloaded this one. Uh, let me just double check again. I haven't installed it at any point. No. So. So fix the location of this CA certs. Um, there's no options to change here, so we'll get that building. That's done. Let's run some tests. All passed. So let's now install it. And that's done. So back to building the KDE frameworks. So we need still to install some dependencies, quite a few dependencies by the looks and this is probably because there's a whole slew of files that are downloaded and built. So let's take a look, see what we've got. So boost we've got, 
Uh, extra CMake modules, I think we installed that already. Let's double check that. Yes, because we're here now. Um, it does say we only need K-Archive, actually. Um, I wonder if it's worth just installing that and then coming back to KDE Frameworks and installing the rest. Um, let's have a look. So K Archive is one of the ones they install here. And let's see how they install all of this. So they install it to a KF5 prefix. And that prefix is in opt so here they rename the directory at the end but they do it right they do a move which is what the other instructions should have been and the instructions are at the end so the wording is probably wrong on the other one Okay, um, so it looks like, have I downloaded this K archive? I think I have, yes. Um, so we'll install an opt. So there isn't an existing, see it doesn't say, I'm not sure where it sets up this KF5 prefix actually. Uh, let's see what it says. So they're all the dependencies. Download them with this, so it, All right, so they download all the frameworks files with these two commands, but then this framework, not it's not like before where we've used the steering file to download and check the files. It's purely used to, well, A, check the signatures of the files, um, but B, to provide a running order uh, for building, obviously because of dependencies. So then they'd create this as root function, but there's nowhere. Oh, it's the pre-installation, I see. So we've not gone to the KD frameworks. Oh, sorry, they've taken us to the KD frameworks, but we should be in this bit first of all. Oh, yes, yes. Here's where K KD frameworks is installed, right? Or is set up the KF5 prefix, right? I presume there's nothing before that. No, so really, um, what's it say here? Strictly speaking, only K archive is required to build Falcon, but several other packages in K file can be used if present. And change. Oh, I see. So it says change K. So this is to install Falcon with just K archive being installed into user. So that's why they take us directly there. Um, KF5 can be installed in user or opt KF5. The LFS editors recommend the latter. So they recommend installing in opt. So I think what we should do is 
do this prerequisite so it's ready for when we build the rest of the KDE frameworks. So let's do, sorry, not that one. Installing a user, installing an opt, right? So we want to do that because this is the recommended way. So let's double check that. Is in the right place, it is. So we want to create this. So we need to become the user. Doesn't say to do that, but you will have to do it. So let's check we've still got that KF5 prefix we have. So we can copy all this in. And you can see this uses Q25 there as well because obviously it's a dependency we've, we've had to build it already. So add the KF5 path to LDSO conf. Several KD frameworks, five and plasma packages install files into Dbus and pod and install. Right, okay, so we need to do these. Some packages or may also install icons in the high color set. So we'll do this as well. Sometimes the installation paths are hard coded into the installed files. This is the reason why opt KF5 is used in the installation prefix instead of opt KF5. So after installing KDE frameworks, you may rename. So these are the instructions that are at the end of the KDE frameworks page. Um, if I scroll down, you can see they're, they're just replicated there. <clears throat> So, yep, it's the same situation as before. So let's go forward to building KDE 5 frameworks, but I'm only going to install um, K-Archive and um, hope that none of these other optional packages that haven't been installed yet, and there are only a few of them now, um, won't affect anything. Uh, if it does, I'll just come back and install KDA Frameworks completely and then go back and install Falcon. It shouldn't do because I have installed Falcon um, in a very limited way for Myth TV. So, right, that should be okay. So, once again, I'm going to just check. We've got this KF5 prefix set. Yes, and you can see it's pointing at the directory because it put the forward slash after it. Um, I've downloaded K-Archive already. If you need to download it yourself, just do wget that URL and then add on the K-Archive file name there like that and that will download it. So I won't run that now because I've already got it. So I'm going to extract it. I'm going to use the instructions. Yeah, I won't bother setting this function up because I'm only, only installing one package. We've done these changes here. See the etc dbus, share dbus and share polkit one here. That, that's there. We did that. So that's all set up. We don't need to enter this environment because we're just building the one package. So what we'll do is make the build directory. run the cmake command you can see the install prefix is in there so that should work so let's just run that by itself and we can check everything afterwards let's take a look so it's looking for stuff there so it actually tells us it's going to install into opt kf5 Run sources, K archive build prefix to set the environment for K archive. It doesn't look like it does that here. We can have a look at that though to see what's in it. 
Um, it's still looking for stuff here. Following optional packages have been found, so there's Lib L's NMA. Following recommended and following required. Following features have been disabled. API documentation, so it's not a problem. Let's take a quick look at this file. So it's exporting some variables with the looks of it. Um, but it doesn't actually look like it does that in here. So I'm not going to run that because we wouldn't have seen that. Let's just double check. No, it goes straight into CMake after it's done the CMake, uh, sorry, straight into Make after it's done the CMake command. So I'll do the same. Then it's got an as root make install. So in as root, we've got sudo. It just does sudo make install by the looks of it, and not even with the environment variable being set. So sudo make install. And yes, it has installed directly into opt KF5. So that should be K archive installed then. Um, it says remove the system D library from the prefix. So we need to do that as root if it exists. Sometimes, oh, and then there's the bit about remapping it. So at the moment, all we've got is KF5. So I'm going to leave it like that at the moment because it's only one um, archive, uh, sorry, one file that's in there. <clears throat> so let's now go back to Falcon. Remove the K archive and the next package we need to install is um, Kitty Web Engine. I'm just going to check if GNOME Keyring needs to be installed. Right, I've just got Subversion needs to be installed after it. We have installed it. Um, but Subversion had some other dependencies as well to be rebuilt. So I need to put in that I've installed uh, K Archive for KD Frameworks. So I'm going to put in that I've done the KD Frameworks pre-installation and I'll add in that I've done K Archive as well. So that's okay. Got GNOME key ring. Let's get Qt Web Engine up. So some warnings there again about Qt Web Engine being forked off of a Chromium build and the fact that it might be out of date. Uh, some other notes there about upgrading. So we need Node.js first of all. And I think we've got all these installed. LibUV. Uh, let's check that one if I've checked all, check all of them. CRS will definitely have ICU version 73. Yeah, we've got that libuv. Yes, we've done that. And nghttp, I'm pretty sure we've done. Yep, and it's only the library's been built. I've got a note there saying, so that should be enough. So this is node.js. So there's no dependencies to install. I think I've downloaded this. I think that's it there. Yes, it is. So let's extract it. And copy the configure command. 
Let's see what other options we've got. Shared, CRS, LibU, UV, OpenSSL. Yep, system options. Do not build NPM. Use if you'd like to build a separate NPM later. All oh, right, okay, so we can leave that out. Oh, it's not actually there. So it will build the NPM. I think it's the node package manager. And shared HTTP pass user system installed library instead of a local copy. Shared HTTP pass. Right, we haven't got that, so we'll have to use the uh, local, uh, the embedded copy. So we'll leave that out. So I think the defaults are good. Let's configure that was quick. And we'll start the build off.
Okay, that's all built in 13, just under 14 minutes. We can run some tests now. See how long these take.
Right, so the tests are finished. Looks like 10 have failed. Um, what I'd like to do is parallel testing and then three to do a TLS. So the TLS are probably this uh, to do this message here about OpenSSL 3 and 3.1. And I imagine these are failing because of parallel. Oh no, it does also mention TLS as well. So yes, it's all to do with um, that sort of same thing, OpenSSL. So I think 10 out of nearly 4,000 is a good, good result. So I'm going to become root to install this. And that's all complete. So back to Qt Web Engine. So Qt Web Engine's got to be reinstalled. I've just noticed after Qt because it's got a dependency here. Uh, sorry, it's a requirement. We've already installed it, so that's okay. NSS PC. Oh, right, this is PCI Utils. That's why I've got a note here. So have we installed that? Uh, no, okay, so let's do that next as PCI utils. Right, I've got that already. So let's install that we've got curl we've got them let's just to get the um, update file the hardware file so we can just build it with this and become root to install it it's done. Uh, it's probably got some configuration still to do. Yep, we can add this script here to get regular updates uh, for the hardware file. Um, we could run it now actually. There probably won't be any changes, but you never know. Oh, it just fetches it. Okay, I thought it might say if there's any changes, and we can put that in to um, make sure that there are indeed regular updates. Right, so that's PCI utils done. Now we'll look at QT's done. Alcelib. We've got both of them. We've got that, that, that. Lib event. We've got pipe wire. And let me check. I think we've got poplar. Yep, and it says to rebuild after QT as well, so it needs QT. So I think we can start with installing Qt Web Engine. So I think I've got the downloads for this as well. Yes, I have. Okay. So I think this takes a while to build. Yeah, 73 SBUs. So first we put two patches in. Then create this git directory like we did before for Qt. Uh, make a change here. 
and another one. Our pulse order to be linked to build time instead of run time. Allow building with Python 3.11 and finally fix a change which allows developers to pass for example minus J20 to make install web engine with these instructions so let's create the build directory let's copy these parameters here let's check to see if there's anything we want to twiddle with oh there's no mention of anything oh here we are um, jumbo build this adds if this is added to the QMA command it calls the jumbo build merge limit to report as nine instead of eight that turns off jumbo build some distros do not get do that to get a smaller build on some architectures. It might save a little space in the build, but the build time will increase by a very large amount. Okay, so we'll leave it with the default. Um, right, we don't need that. Ninja jobs. Right, we'll leave it as it is. Um, if you do read that, it mentions things like if you want to limit it because of memory and things, which could be quite important. So if you are a bit limited, you might, might want to reduce that. But apart from that, that should be adequate for us. So once again, I'm just going to check the output to see if there's anything that should be set that isn't. So haven't got that, haven't got that, haven't got that. Kerberos, no. Test support, no. Yep, so that looks all okay. So I'm going to start the build and wait for it to finish.
Okay, so that's built after just over an hour. There's no tests, so let's install. As before, we need to remove these library dependencies as the root. And there's no configuration. Um, should have these already set. I think it was just user namespaces that needed to be set a while back. Uh, but we can double check. So that's that one's set. That one is set. And I think this is already set by default. Yep, so that's all okay. So that's Qt Web Engine finished. And now move back to Falcon. Um, I think we had GNOME keyring. Yes. So I think finally we can build Falcon. Um, yeah, I've already downloaded this. So let's extract it. So this probably won't take too long because I think most of the functionalities is in all the libraries we've been building. Um, so the only thing is to put testing equals off to save time and space by not building test programs. So I'll have a go running the tests. So I want to build a whole lot. Okay, what have we got here? Right, now this is what I found when I did my Myth TV videos that this KI uh, 18N dependency was missing. So um, I'm not sure what causes this because it's not mentioned in the instructions. So it's obviously something else that's influencing you know, the way I build it maybe. Um, could be that I've, because I've missed out one of these dependencies possibly. So what we need to do is to, I don't think I've downloaded that, have I? Oh yes I have, so I'm going to extract it. Um, now have I got this KF5 prefix set? Probably not. Oh it is set, right, okay. So all I need to do is to make a build directory. Put these CMAC, CMake files in. Um, oh, I forgot the dot dot. And then build. Then sudo minus e make install. So that's k18n built, so I'm going to put that in the build. Build list. Uh, so now let's have another go at building Falcon. So, just need to run this now. Yep, that's worked and it's building.
good that's built so now let's run some tests um so these look like it might be a possibly to do with the fact that there's no GUI when I run those tests so again I'm going to go onto the GUI change into Falcon and then build and then make a test and now I've still got some exceptions and it's the same number of exceptions so this could possibly be the dependencies in Qt Web Engine. Uh, no, sorry, uh, KD Frameworks, possibly. Um, otherwise, it should work. Um, in fact, I'll install it now. And if I now try and run it, right, it says it cannot load the shared libraries. So maybe I need to do a sudo ld config. And let's try again. Yes, now it's come up with a window, place the window, and I've got the uh, start page of Falcon. So that is now installed. So that seems to be working okay. So finally, after many tens of hours, um, we've got a GUI and we've now got a decent browser that will work well in the GUI. So um, what I'll do is to tidy this up. Now the only problem is I've just thought of is that I'm going to lose all the links that have been highlighted that I've used within Falcon. So what I'm going to do is end this video now. I'm going to look in to see if I can copy across the configuration I've been using here and uh, copy that across onto the new machine that we're building BLFS on. And assuming I find out how to do that I'll let you know what I've done and uh, the next time you'll see the screen it will hopefully be booting on the new machine that we've been building up with BLFS and we'll carry on with the rest of the build from there okay so in a moment you should see the um, PC that we're building BLFS on come up there's the logo and soon we'll get into it and carry on with the build so that's the boot up I'll log in and use startx to start up TWM so it'll look a little bit different because I've just set some defaults to um, adjust the font size and for the non-login windows, the color. So what I'm going to do is just minimize that, bring it down here, just so I don't accidentally log us out. In fact, what I will do is I'll start Falcon from here and you'll see it working for the first time. So just type Falcon. And I managed to copy over, as you can see, the profile. It's got the same tabs. It's got all the highlighted links that have been remembered. So I'll just um, put this back to where it was and bring back Falcon. And bring this window to the forefront. So uh, just shrink this a little bit. Falcon remembers its position automatically, so I won't need to set anything up for that one. Just adjust it where I want and leave it there. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'll shut that down and go back to the menu. You can see all the stuff that's been installed now. 
um, I estimate probably well certainly at least half has been installed if you're going by the links and it could possibly be closer to 60% maybe um, now I haven't brought the spreadsheet onto this machine because I haven't got LibreOffice which is what I'm using to update it so it would be pretty useless so I'll be updating that on a separate machine um, but what I intend to do is to go back through the list of files that or packages that have been installed and see if there's any that can be reinstalled that are awaiting other dependencies. Um, one of the things I've decided to do is to install Doxygen in case there's any further documentation that can be installed using it. So I'll make a start with that one. Uh, So I'll bring that up. Okay, looks like I've got a sensitive mouse button. So as you can see, it needs CMake, Git, Graphviz, we've got GhostScript, LVM, Qt it needs. Well, we've got that running obviously now. Text Live, that's something that I want to install. Um, Zapian, I think that's part of Text Live. So I wonder if it's actually worth installing text live. Um, let's have a look. Oh no, Zapian's not part of text live, but let's have a look at it anyway, because it might be possibly one to install next anyway. Um, So it doesn't look like it's got many dependencies. It looks like the ones that it does require we've installed. So let's have a quick look at these. So these have got quite a few dependencies. Uh, well, that one has at least, which chances are we've got most of them. That's got a hell of a lot. That looks like Perl modules to me. So that could take a while unless we've got some of them installed. Uh, I think we've got all those options installed. Yeah, I think maybe Text Live will be a good one next. Um, and then I'll come back and do Doxygen and Zapian. Let's see what that involves. And that's simple enough. Yep, so let's go to Text Live. And Text Live is actually needs to be set up first of all so if I go back to the home and search for text live um, start here is probably best it tells you the two ways to install text live um, obviously set the path setting the path of text live which is the next section and then follow install TL Linux so that's the binary installer but it says most people like us will want to build from source. So it says to go to setting the path for text live, then go on to text live itself and then install the remaining parts, which are these other applications. And as you can see, these are the tools down here. So let's go to setting the path for text live first. So before starting to build text live, set up your path so that the system can properly find the files if you set up your login scripts as recommended, which we have, update the parts by creating the text live sh script. The program is always installed in an Arch Linux subdirectory on 32 bit, and this is always i386 Linux for x8664 and i question mark 86. We can generate this as text arch. And there's something there about upgrading, so maybe some issues possibly with that. 
So let's create this text arch variable. Uh, let's go to uh, sources BLFS. And as you can see, these are all the files that we've installed so far. So let's do this assignment here. We can echo text arch to see what it's come up with. And as you can see, it's come up with x86 64 Linux, which is what you'd expect for a 64 bit machine. So now we need to become root to do the next bit. In fact, I should have done the previous bit as let's unset it and do it. Text arch. So if I now echo it, it's not set. So I'll become root. And I'll put this all in one go. So now we should have profile dot d text live dot sh, which will set up everything. It explains about this all here. So it says we can source that straight away. And well, for some reason the profile resets the host name, so that must be because it sets the path up as well as bash RC, but must be because it happens in a different order. So maybe I need to set the path in profile on bash RC. So what I'll do is I'll log oh I forgot that would happen. Um what I'll do is I'll get this up here and run another X term, put it into the background. In theory, I should be able to just plonk this here and then resize it like that. So uh, we also, oh, I've lost the background as well. So what I'll do is I'll quit this. Um, I'll bring back the login terminal. I'll quit that. I'll just start X again to set up all my defaults. Right, so let's start Falcon again. Just minimize that. Oh, in fact, I could leave this, leave the login terminal in the background. There's nothing really wrong with that. So if I now echo, for example, the path um, no, it hasn't got the path. What did it have? Right, it's man info and info path. So, uh, man path. You can see it's got uh, no, it doesn't seem to have worked that. Oh no, because I need to log right out of the terminal completely that's why so I need to log in at this point and then run start X run Falcon again and now I would expect to see the path updated and yes there it is at the end of text live so if I go back to sources BLFS I've just got to do this bit at the end so I'll become root again and copy that in. So that should be active if I do text live prefix. Oops. You can see that that's going to work when LD config is run. So you should now proceed to either install TL, uh, TL Unix for the binary installation or text live for um, installing from source. So I'll do that. So I'll just add the fact that I've set the path for text live in the spreadsheet.
go to the bottom, paste that in, and then we're going to go to Text Live and begin the installation of Text Live from source. So you have to excuse me if I'm talking and nothing's happening, it's because I'm updating this spreadsheet. So there's something there about only FTP and R sync uh, are available protocols for downloading from the master site, but they've got mirrors here. Um, most of text live can be built from source without pre existing installation, but Zindi for indexing needs to needs working versions of latex pdf latex when configures run and the test suite will say for asy and for install and install for asy will fail if text has not already been installed additionally biber is not provided with the text live source and the version of dvi svgm in the text live tree cannot be built if shared system libraries are used so all of these packages are dealt with on their own pages and can be built after installing this package if you're not really done, so you should start by setting the path. So we've done that. So we need to fetch the um, downloads. Um, I think I'll download from the source location and I'll verify the signatures afterwards. Oops. Okay, I'm going to have to do copy of my copy link address, no, highlight it, so it's a bit of a pain, but it, at least it works, so additional downloads, so let's pull that, all oh, 3.7 gigabytes, that's going to take a while, That is big, that one's small, that one's huge. Right, so it looks like there's about four gigabytes of downloads. So we need to download this one. And also this patch. So let's get those downloading, see if there's anything else that can be done while that's downloading. So Cairo we've got font config, free type GC, graphite half bars, ICU lib paper. Looks like we've got everything there actually. Runtime dependencies, we've got that, we've got Ruby, we've got TK, we've got GoScript, okay. Right, so all we can do is wait 20 minutes by the looks of it for the download to finish um, and then we'll carry on with building this. How long does this take to build? Not that long actually, considering the size. Okay, so I'll wait for that to finish then.
Okay, so those have finished downloading. I'm going to just check the signatures of those. So the first one is text live. Oh, we've all text live something, so let's have a look. So source should begin B, C, and then E, F, E, which it does. The text MF starts seven four and ends in four seven A, which it does. And the text live TLPDB DB, which is the top one, starts five oh seven and ends in seven F seven, so that's fine. So I need to extract the first package, which is the main one. Uh, text live putting on three source. Dot tar dot XZ. And I'll change into that. On three source, and we'll start with the build instructions. So, I export the text arch again. Uh, what am I doing? This is a root. Right, let me do this again. That's the four files I've downloaded and come back out. Right, so let's start all over again. Text live 313 source dot tar dot XZ. So I'll copy this again. CD into text live 313 source. Paste that in. Now I'm going to run the patch in. Then make a temporary build directory. Then I'll copy this configure command. Paste that in. I'll check to see if there's anything that can be changed, although um, if there is, I probably won't change that much because it's not something I generally use. I'm really doing this just for the sake of the recording. So prefix bin. Uh, so those first few include. Uh, so it's like enable shared. Right, I can't see that. Use the shared versions. Oh yes, there it is. It's, it's not in its own line. Okay. With system, use, unless this parameter is used, includes versions of these libraries are statically compiled. So it's including all these dependencies that we've already installed. So no, it doesn't look like there's anything else to add. And you can build this without XORG. That's interesting. Didn't know that. So let's run that configure now okay so those settings look sane it's all going into Opt Text Live 2023, which is what we expect. So let's build this now. And wait for it to finish.
Right, so that's built. We can run some tests and see what happens. I'll time this as well. Okay, I did see two tests fail. Um, I don't know how far back I'll be able to scroll on this, but let's see. So there's that one there. PS Utils, yep, that's one. And there's one just a little further back. Which unfortunately I can't scroll back to, but there was certainly one other red one that went by. So, um, is there any file mentioned no it doesn't look like it but uh, I'm happy with that everything else passed as far as I could see so I'm going to become root now and install this package uh, just check this is set still it is so we can copy and paste all of this and it says only run make text links once if it's rerun it can change all the program sim links that they point to themselves and are useless so that's worth remembering it's that third command there so now we install the additional files as the root user so I'll put the V on so we can watch this happening rather than just sitting there with the screen not working because I think this is the big file I'm not sure how long this will take to extract it'll take a little bit longer because I'm putting it to the screen but at least we can see what's going on And while that's running, it says the next bit. It has been established by Debian that the Python scripts in Latex Make will work with Python 3. So update them to invoke that, that version by running the following command as the root user. So when this is finished, we shall do that. Okay, that's done. So let's put this next command in. That's done. Then, so there's a root user, initialize the new system. It will produce a lot of output, this command it says here. So let's wait for that to finish. And it hasn't worked. Well, why would that be? I'll 
K2. No, we haven't got that command in the pass. Okay, dollar pass. Right, that's why. So let's do sudo su echo dollar pass. No, sudo su minus. Let's try that. Echo dollar pass. So that looks good. So let's go to sources and uh, BLFS text live 313 source and let's put those commands back in again So while that's doing that, just reading this note here, it says something about using context. Um, how uh, it's moved on from using Lua text in the previous MKIV version to Lua meta text, which can be pulled in from Git. Um, it uses means on a Ninja, but it does not fit easily into the BLFS layout of text live. Um, have a little extra work, MKIV files can still be processed using the file shipped in TextMF, and it warns that the next version may not be trivial, will not be a trivial exercise to adapt it to work with PLFS. So that's something to bear in mind. So those last commands look like they worked. We'll put this link in for events and DVI SVGM. And then as the router, uh, root user, um, these steps will create MTX run and context. So let's put those in. All these commands. It looks like that's all worked. And it says you can now proceed on to asymptote, Viber, DVIS, VGM and, and or Zindi. So I'm going to take a break now and I'll be doing that on the next session so what i'll do is i'll just move this on to a symptote and tidy up here and that'll be it so what i'll do here is control q to quit um falcon and this is a login window so i can just do control d to come out and I'll become root to shut down the machine and that will be it.